so yes, I, I was at the airport uh, this week and um, funny thing happened when I was going through security. Actually, this all ties into this episode's themes. So I went through security and you know, the new security um, thing now is you stand in front of that big screen and you got to stand on the, where your footholds are and hold mm-hmm. your arms up in the big kind of YMCA thing. And Is it a YMCA? Yourself. Like where I have gone, oh, all the oh. places I've been, it's more like you're sort of, you're doing some oh, old fashioned- crab? Yeah, yeah, it's crab like dance. a crab, like it's an out okay. to well, maybe, the side. Maybe it's more yeah. of a crab dance. Yeah. Well, whatever it is. And I tend to, when I know I'm going to be getting on a plane, like dress as like, I, I arrive pr- with all my, you know, wallet and phone and shit already in my hand, yep. carry on and nothing in my pockets because I just want to get through security as fast as possible. And I'm wearing tracksuit pants. So I'm wearing like literally sneakers, tracksuit mm-hmm. pants and a t-shirt, nothing else. No watch, no bracelets, nothing. Um, my stuff goes through. I stand on the thing and to beep, beep. And the guy says, sir, do you have any objects in your pockets? And I'm like, no, no, it's just tracksuit pants and T-shirt. And he's like, well, can you just, uh, we'll just do it again. And beep, beep, are you sure you have anything in your pockets? And I'm like, no. And he was this young guy and he was kind, he seemed like he couldn't find the, he, he said, oh, you have something in your, yeah. your, uh, your area. And I'm like, sorry. And he's like, your area. And I'm like, I don't. And he flicked the screen around <laughs> and there was like the outline of my body. And there was a giant red exclamation mark over my groin. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. like something in my groinal area is is setting off the machine. Uh-huh. And he said, "Do you have like any uh, uh, like any implants?" And I said, "No, no, nothing." <laughs> no no. Erectile. Oh, sorry. When the queen died, I got a Prince Albert just in like because yeah. like, out of respect, you know, it's a mourning period. So then he said, oh, you have to step back in. And it, beep, beep, and it kept going off. And I said, look, there's literally, I said, it's just like I got underpants on and after this. And so he's gone, okay. So I stepped off the machine and he said, you have to stick your hands in your pockets. And you know that party trick that in the, like yeah. while we're talking about the 80s, your uncle at a party in the 80s might've yeah. showed you a trick called the white-eared elephant. <laughs> yeah, I want to say a white-eared <laughs> elephant. Yeah. And now your, da- your uncle isn't allowed to come around to the house anymore. <laughs> he went away That's for right. a while. No one ever talked about where he went. So I I, he, I had to sort of do a half one one eared elephant. He, they wanted to show the ears, but not the trunk. So okay. I had to um, open up my po- pull my pockets out, which I did, mm-hmm. and they saw that they were empty. And then I had to put my hands back in my pockets and kind of create some space around the groinal region, yeah. like, like puff it out, uh, like puff yep. my pants mm-hmm. <laughs> out of it. Like I guess mm-hmm. whatever was setting the machine off, I needed to just realign my pants. So I then went back in, beep 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 beep, same spot, oh. little exclamation mark okay. in my groin. Wow. So the guy then switched to. Is there any, um, is there any chance that this security machine is flirting with you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was weird. But then the weird thing was they went from metallic uh-huh. object to uh, we're going to have to bomb swipe you, like chemical oh, yeah. test. Am I allowed mm-hmm. to say it on the podcast or is that still getting me arrested? Can you talk about it? Can you say bomb away from an airport or is that still. I think you're allowed to. You're, you're, you're referring flights? to the Bureau of Meteorolo- Meteorology. Yeah, that's right. I can't even say it. That's what meteorology, the weather people. <laughs> <laughs> the weather people. So then um, they took me to the, the chemical swipey part. <laughs> and uh, I, because at first I was like. Hmm. Oh, he said, you're going to need to see this other guy. And I said, you're not going to, you're not going to strip search me. <laughs> like, I'm not really, it's early. I'm not really in the mood for being strip searched. It's early, um, you say, as if it would like, oh, afternoon, strip search away. But it's early in the morning, mate. <laughs> well, just let me, just let me warm it up a bit, please. At least, like, just get some, <laughs> some, some blood down there first. Um, and they're like, no, no, but uh, we need to test you for chemicals. So, mm-hmm. and they didn't put a screen up or take me another room. I had to rub my hands on my groin right. <laughs> like where the the beep beep was uh-huh. going off like um michael jackson both hands on my groin uh-huh. and then they swipe my hands to see if there's any chemicals yeah and it was like i it was a good five seconds of rubbing like i would thought one why so hang on are you hang on, are, are your hands down your pants no no <laughs> No, on the outside of my pants. Okay, so because it sounded like they made you <laughs> put both that. Turns out I wasn't even at an airport. I was at an S and M club. Have a rub down there, and then we'll give you a little chemical test. But like, do they think they have a bomb in your pants? Is that what they're looking for, or evidence of a bomb so. in your pants? I, but I don't, I don't know how they went because I, I always thought the 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 crab dance mm. was for. For metal, maybe mm. it scans for more than that. Maybe it's just like foreign objects. Again, like, like not to harp on Michael Jackson, like for many reasons, mm. but it's very yes. much your Michael Jackson thriller. 
style yeah. like did, hand did, that they make yeah. you do actually so this is <laughs> yeah could you, could you now side to side like you're a dinosaur right. do that please yeah. and then yeah and they're just making a why do I have to say Shimon <laughs> they're making a homemade security tape version scene by scene <laughs> remake of Thriller, Thriller with people who come through the machine. <laughs> so I had to like, yeah, I had to rub the outside of my groin yeah. for like a good five seconds, uh, like, like this. And then they swipe my hands and yeah. it was all, it was all, it was all, it was all for nothing. Like I actually, I, I, I did I you ever identify really... what it was that was like, oh, oh, hang on. So were you wearing, a pair of um, uh, like pants that are designed by our uh, mutual friend who designs Mate. pants. No, no. Okay. Were you wearing a pair of pants that had a drawstring is what I'm getting at, I guess. Yes. Was yes. the j- drawstring tucked into your pants or like hanging out the front? Uh, I, I what would know. you normally do? Were you normally, do you normally tuck it in? I normally tuck it in. Yeah. yeah. So is there, a, did, it, did it have like little metal, like was it was all your it was, draw was string... just a red exclamation yeah. mark above my balls? No, I understand that, so... but I'm, that's not a photo of what they were seeing. That exclamation mark comes up if they like. Sometimes if I'm wearing like a double hoodie, because you know, like I quite quite like a double Why hoodie. You? Um, <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. I've never worn a double. Who wears double? Like a like a like a big well, jacket. that I would be. I'd be wearing like a hoodie like this, and then I'd be wearing a jacket that also has a hood on it, right? Yeah. So like you know. Okay. So then you get this like exclamation mark at the back of your neck because the machine just senses that there's too much stuff there or whatever. So that, you know, so I've had those and I've had the things in the, the pockets, like, but like, I would have thought for the exclamation mark, there's got to be something unusual there. Is there a chance that like you have like had had something implanted in your penis, like that you don't know about? I don't think so. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, I mean, you know what? Like, how about this? Mm-hmm. I've been eating real clean, uh-huh. like you know, no impurities in my body, yeah. just like all like lean proteins and lots of sure. veggies and stuff. But I had to do this event in Melbourne. That's why I was down there, and um, uh, I was emceeing this thing, and they were bringing me food, but I didn't really have time to eat it because I was going off on an off stage. And so by the time I got back to my hotel room, I was fucking starving. Mm-hmm. It was like you know, after midnight. And I didn't want to order room service. It's going to take too long. I just opened whatever they had in the cupboard at the hotel. And they had like salt and vinegar chips and this jar of um, chocolate covered macadamias. Uh-huh. And I have to say, well, it was like <laughs> the greatest fucking twosome. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know that, you know, men on business trips can't be trusted. Yeah. The threesome I had that night, yeah. the illicit threesome <laughs> I had in my hotel room was between a bag Sweet of salt and vinegar chips. and salty. <laughs> Yeah, and a jar of honey encrusted chocolate covered macadamias. Yeah. It was fucking delicious. Um, so maybe like I don't know the impurity of you know normally my urine is like right. just ninety eight percent like fucking water and, yeah. and no no impurities, and so maybe that that's what set it off. Yeah, how about that? All right. it was in my maybe. bladder. Okay, well, I mean, are there heavy metals in in salt and vinegar chips? I'm not ruling it out. Um, okay, so all right, so what happens? Why is a childhood sweetheart got something to do with this? Okay, so then, right, so prior to this, about a week before, Gemma and I were talking about um, these neighbours we had when we still lived in Sydney, and like, we had this semi-detached house about fifteen years ago in Randwick, and um, the neighbours we shared a wall with had two little boys, and it was the perfect, um, it was the perfect arrangement because we were still, you know, young and partying and, you know, having people back to our place to all hours in the morning, but they would never complain about that. And we would never complain when their kids got up at 6am and ran toys up and down the hallways on the hardwood floors. It was just like, okay, you know, you go your way, you go. And we are also friendly as well. They would mind junior when we went away, we look after their place when they went away. It was totally great. And then one of them, uh, the, uh, the husband got a job overseas and we sort of never saw them again. It's been like 10, 12 years. And apropos of nothing, I just sort of thought of them and was like, oh, God, they were the best neighbors, you know, like we've, we've really um, had some shocker neighbors in our time, but they were the good ones. Like they are the benchmark of neighbors, you know, mm-hmm. and 
I wonder if there was some way to get back in contact with them, but I couldn't really remember what their surname was. And it'd been almost like 10 years since we'd last seen them. Anyway, after my ball alarm, um, I put my mask on uh, and I, uh, I get on the plane and I'm kind of annoyed because um, when they booked my ticket, they didn't use my frequent flyer number. So oh, yeah. I didn't get like a priority seating. Mm. I got like sat, you know, three from the toilet mm. right in the middle and I couldn't change it. And I was kind of like, God damn it. And so I was trying to change it. Couldn't change it. Mm. So I get on the plane. And also, you're emceeing an event. The club didn't like, not, didn't get your business class fare. They didn't get no, you to set up the front. We are, we're, we're, we're not one of the big okay, clubs. All right. no, no business class <laughs> flight. Uh, and so, um, uh, this dude gets on and he's like, oh, sorry, I think I'm sitting in front of you. And so he walks past. I'm like, that's, I'm pretty sure that's the neighbor. And so I had my mask on though. And I said, Hey, I said, is, uh, is your name Dan? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, and so I put my mask down and I was like, Hey, it's me, Charlie. And he's like, ah, and so I was like, what are, what's going on? I thought you were overseas. And he's like, oh, we've just actually moved to the Gold Coast. And I was like, no shit. I said, you know, we live just in the Northern rivers and we're neighbors and, and we, and it was like, and so we started talking and then I'm like, oh. I've taken the mask down. He wasn't yeah. wearing one. Mm -hmm. I've taken mine down. Yeah. Now, like, what do I do? Do I put it back up? We're still like, we're a centimeter apart from each other and we're talking quite animatedly. Yeah. Like, I don't know that this, it's not like I'm wearing an N95. It's like a little piece of cloth. Yeah. Is it going to be weird that I have my mask on while I'm talking to him? And is it, the guy on my left isn't wearing one. He's not wearing one. I'd say that maybe... 2% of the plane are wearing masks. Like, I mean, am, am I really protecting myself with this? So I didn't put it back up. I thought it would be too weird if to sit there and I would make him feel uncomfortable by, by wearing a mask. Yeah. He did but this, is, on it. this is the whole point. Like, is that like, you know, we talk about whether making things mandatory makes people do them or not. And the argument's always like, well, people can make their own choices and people will, you know, still make sensible choices if you educate them in the right way and those sort of things. But like masks on airplanes, I was on an airplane the day before when they were compulsory. And I would say that like 80, 85% of people, some people got early on not having to wear them anymore, but like most people were still doing the right thing and wearing them. And then I flew the day that the, the mask mandate came down yeah. and yeah, 2% would be generous myself. Yeah. Uh, and there was one other person that I saw on the plane, the woman who was sitting next to me, she said to me, she said, would you, um, I, I noticed you're wearing a mask. Would you like me to wear my mask? And I'm like, look, no one else is on the plane is wearing a mask. So I'm, I'm going to keep mine on. And I'm, but I d don't, don't feel that just because I, I think that race is run, unfortunately, like, you know, that race is run yeah. and we absolutely lost. All I'm going to do now is just keep my mask on. Well, now, yeah, well, it's, I actually, I mean, it, it was, I had forgotten to take a mask. I actually made a point of going to like up to the counter and getting one. And then I was like, uh, all right. I mean, I got the guy next to me. He's got the sniffles anyway. I'm, whatever, whatever he's got, I'm catching. I don't think this mask is protecting me. Yeah. Uh, well, it's anyway, it's not, right. it's, well, it's not, it's not like there's, you know, like still thousands of cases a day and people, hundreds of people are dying. <laughs> and the hospital's getting overloaded. Yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine, guys. To see the full video, join our Patreon. Patreon.com slash TOEFOP.